So right now, I'm going to give you a beginner's guide to how layers work inside of Photoshop. Hey, Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and welcome. So we do all kinds of tutorials on here, but I'm going to start for a little while. Just once a week, we're going to do some beginner's tutorials because I've had some requests for that. So in addition to our usual tutorials that we're going to do on Tuesday, I'm also going to add these ones on top. So we're going to start with probably the best place to start in Photoshop is layers. So here we are. We are going to open a document and I just chose file open and then we get our open dialog box and I'm going to just click and I'm also going to hold down the shift key and click again because I'm going to open two files and then we're just going to click on open. Okay, so I've got something here that has four layers and I'm going to show you exactly how they work. So on top we have winger, which is our character and then underneath we have our hive and then we have our trees and then we have our background and you can see they kind of stacked like this in a 3D way so you can kind of see how they work just for simplicity. Okay, so here we are. I'm just going to drag out our layers panel in the middle and if we want to see these thumbnails a little bit bigger, what we do is just click on this menu here and you'll see something that says panel options and under panel options, we can change the size. So we're going to choose these really, really large thumbnails. So we're going to click OK and you'll notice they're larger. It just makes it easier for you to see what's going on. Now, in this particular document, we have a background and three layers. So this is how they're organized inside of the layers panel. This is the panel here. It can be found under window layers. Usually it's loaded by default, but if you can't find it, that's where it is. And you see these little images here. These are the thumbnails representing each layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide the top three layers and I'm just going to click and drag through those eyeballs to hide them. So we can start with our background. So this is our background here. If I show or hide that, when you see this checkerboard, it means everything's transparent. And this is our background. We know it's a background because it says background. And also by default, you'll see this little chain here. This little padlock means the background is locked. That means if I've got the move tool selected, which we have here, you can't move it. If you try to move it, it's just going to say you can't because it's locked. And backgrounds are always locked by default. And this is good, so you can't accidentally move them. Now, how layers work is essentially like sheets of glass. Imagine you have a table and then you put a sheet of glass over the top of it with something painted on it. And then you put another sheet of glass on top of that with something painted on it. Not the whole glass, but just a little piece. And then on the top, you put a third object on there that's painted onto glass. You've seen that, you know, glass or cellophane or different things like that. So this works exactly the same way. So the higher up it goes in this layers panel, the more towards the front. So the background obviously is the back. That's the easy way to remember it. And at the very top is going to be the foreground. So we can show or hide each of these by hitting the eyeball. So we're going to hit this little eyeball here next to the trees. And when I do notice, you see this is selected. This means this layer now is selected. And if I choose my move tool, I can click and drag this around and we can see now, look at this, we're moving this particular layer around. We're repositioning it. We can scale it. We can apply filters. We can do all kinds of things. But what you need to do is make sure you select the layer first before you can work on it. All right, so let's click the next layer. So we're going to hit the eyeball on the next one. And there's our beehive. And notice I can move that around now that I've selected that layer. And notice that it's above our tree which is also above our background. Finally, let's have a look at our character. We're going to hit the little eyeball and there's winger. Select that layer. Notice if it's this other layer is selected, even though we show the eyeball, whichever layer is highlighted is the one that's going to move. So we're going to choose the top layer now and we can move winger around. Notice once again, he's always on top and you can see he's on top. So now we can change the order of layers by dragging. So if I grab this layer and I drag it underneath the hive, see how I've repositioned it now? And if I move this, notice now it's going to go behind the beehive because we've added that layer down there. 
And if we want to go behind the tree, we drag it down even further and notice now it's being hidden by the tree. So now Winger is flying on the second layer. So there's the background, the second, third, fourth layer, if we just want to call it that. And so you can see we can easily organize their order by just clicking and dragging. So if we've looked at visibility, we can hit that little eyeball and turn on or off any layer. Now, when a layer is selected, we can do some things to it. One of the things we can do is we can adjust the opacity. And opacity is just another word for transparency. So if I click on this slider here, I can lower the opacity. Now it's at 46%, and we can slide it all the way down, and we can make it more or less transparent. And so we could go in here, and we could adjust the transparency of all these different layers if we wanted and make them start to blend together. And as we reduce it, you can see the layers underneath start to show through. And if I put Winger there, notice you can see the beehive underneath him. So we can increase the opacity to 100 once again. Why don't we do that? And then there's another thing we can do with layers. I'm not going to get into depth because I've got another tutorial on that and we'll cover it another time. But we can also change the layer blending modes. So when we've got this layer selected and it says normal, if you click on here, you'll see all these different modes. And as I roll over it, notice it changes the way that that layer interacts with the layers underneath it. Now, I'm not going to go in and explain all of these. As I said, I've got another tutorial on layer blending modes you could check out. And maybe we'll cover this also in our beginner's uh, guide at some point. So if you want to change the way it interacts with the layer underneath, just change that blend mode. To go back to how it was, just hit normal. All right, great. Now there's different ways we can select these layers. So one of those is if we go here and we choose auto select, we have two options, a group or a layer. If you turn it to layer and you click on that layer, it's now selected. We can also turn on show transform controls. And if we turn this on, you'll see a bounding box around it. And now as we click each layer, it's going to be selected and you can tell because of the bounding box. And now it's working very much like it would in Illustrator. Now, of course, you can't click on a background and move it because the background is locked. You can lock any layer. So let's say winger. Let's click on winger and then we can hit the padlock. And now you can't accidentally move or even select winger. See that? Now, rather than working this way with the auto select on another way you can do it is to turn that off and if you hit the control or the command key on mac and you click it will select that layer so if we want to select the tree hold down control or command and click on the tree and it will select that so this does it the same as auto select but with auto select you don't have to hit the control or command key which means that you can just simply click to move now just be aware when you do this if you have one layer obscuring another like we have right now sometimes it can be difficult to select that see how we're trying to select it but we can't quite select that beehive and the way we could do that is to just click away then click on the beehive but not where it overlaps and of course if we want to move winger we have to unlock that layer by hitting that padlock and now we can move it around as much as we like. All right, so we've looked at these. When we lock the layer, by the way, we can lock everything, or we can choose to lock the transparency. If I lock the transparency, that means if I choose a brush tool, and a brush is here in the toolbar, and I paint, it will only paint over winger. It won't paint over the transparency because the transparency is locked. If that transparency was unlocked, I could just paint on the whole layer. The next option here is the brush. So that means that I can't accidentally paint. Notice now the brush is locked, so I can't paint on that layer. I could choose a different layer and I could paint. But when I select this layer, I can't because the painting is locked. The other option we can do is we can lock the position. So that means we can't move it by accident. If I turn off the paint, that means I can still paint on there, but I still can't move Winger because the position is locked. And the other option, of course, if we just lock everything, that means I can't move it, I can't paint it, I can't do anything on that layer. 
So it's a good way to protect those layers. If we go down to the bottom here in the layers panel, we have some different options. One of them is if we want to create a new layer, we just hit this icon here and this will create a new layer. Um, right now we're in Photoshop CC 2019. In Photoshop 2020, it looks the same, but it has just a little cross in it. It has a plus on it. That's the only difference. And so we can create that new layer. And that means if I want to do something like paint or do something, let's paint. Now I'm painting onto this new layer. And because it's a new layer, it's not affecting the rest of the image. So if I hide that layer, notice that I can easily do that or I can show it. I can choose our move tool. I can re let's turn off that auto select. I can select the layer here and I can move it around. I can change the transparency. I can do different things. And as long as show transform controls are on, I can go around here. I can rotate it. I can do different things by choosing these little boxes. These are our transform boxes. Okay. Now, if I want to get rid of this layer, I can choose the trash can to delete it and click yes. The other way, I'm just going to undo that control Z is if I just hit the delete key on my keyboard, it will instantly get rid of it without the confirmation. Okay, right now I'm going to turn off the auto select and I'm also going to turn off the show transform controls. So that means if I want to select a layer now, I just click on it in the layers panel. And that way I can work on it without accidentally clicking another layer. All right. What if I want to duplicate? Say, for example, I'd like a copy of this layer of winger. I'd like to have a twin. Well, all we need to do is just click and drag. And this is something we can do in a lot of areas in Photoshop is drag into tools. So if we drag into the new layer icon, Notice it will create a copy of it. And now we have twins. This can also be done with a keyboard shortcut. That's Control J on Windows or Command J on Mac. And I showed you how to delete it a couple of ways, but now that we know we can drag into the panel, we can also delete a layer by simply dragging it into the trash can and that will get rid of it. Now, there's more controls up here. If we click on this little corner here, this will open up a menu and you'll see there's a lot of options we have here. We can do things like lock layers and do different things. But one of the areas that's quite interesting is that we can merge down the layers. So there's three different options here. We have to flatten, merge visible or merge down. Let me demonstrate what these do. If I choose flatten the image, it combines all the layers into the background. And so this is just like a flattened file, like a photograph you just opened. So let me just hit undo. You might do that if you want to apply a filter to the whole image at once or do something like that. But it's very rare you'll want to flatten these because most of the time it's a good idea to keep the layers intact. And that just gives you more flexibility later on. But let me show you another option. If I hide the top layer, which is Winger, of course, and I click on the menu. Notice that merge visible is grayed out. So is merge down. These are both grayed out. And that's because this layer is hidden. When it's grayed out, it means you can't apply that option. And that's because we're trying to merge a layer that's hidden. So let's go down to this layer that's not hidden. Notice the eyeballs are on. And we click on this menu. Now you'll see all these options are available. So let's choose Merge Visible. And what it does is it flattens everything once again into a background, into one layer, except that hidden layer. And if I choose to show it, now we've got Winger with a completely flattened background. Let me undo that again. All right, now all the layers are turned on. Let's go back to our menu. And there's another option here, which says Merge Down. And what that does is it combines the layer with the layer directly underneath. If you notice here, we've got Winger. And in the hive here is the layer underneath. Watch what happens when I hit Merge Down. 
Notice those two now are combined into one layer. Let me undo that. Control Z, of course, will undo that. All right, so if we look here, you'll also notice that there's keyboard shortcuts next to a lot of tools. So if I wanted to merge these down, I see it says Command E because I'm on Mac. If you're on Windows, it's Control E. And so if I'm on this layer and I hit the Control E, that will merge it down. Control Z or Command Z will undo it, or Z if you're living in New Zealand, Australia, Britain, probably Canada. Um, there's other things we can do if we want to copy this layer. Let me show you some keyboard shortcuts. Control or Command J will copy it. Let me undo it. Another way we can copy that layer is if we hold the Alt key or the Option key. As we drag, notice it creates a copy. And as I hold the Alt and Option, notice that arrow there? It changes into a double arrow. That means it's going to duplicate. If I want to get rid of it, hit the Delete key. So that's some basics there of some things we can do inside of layers. I'm curious if this was helpful. And because this is the first that I've done in this series of the beginners ones, let me know, did I move too fast? Did I move too slow? How was the pacing? Was the content too difficult, too simple? I'd be really curious to uh, get your feedback and just drop that in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new here at Photoshop Cafe, consider hitting that subscribe button and you're going to get a new tutorial from me every week. At this point, it's going to be two because you're going to get our regular tutorials on Tuesday and you're going to get our special beginners tutorials once a week as well. So when you hit the subscribe button, it's going to ask for the notifications, turn on all the notifications so that YouTube can let you know when I upload the new video. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.